Well, we all know that Dwayne Wade is now reunited with his good friend, LeBron James, who he played four years in Miami with. Uh, they had four consecutive NBA Finals appearances, I believe, with the Miami Heat. And uh, they had won two championships together. Wade has three championships. Now, LeBron also has three. And um, the particulars, Wade signed a one-year $2.3 million deal with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Wade isn't uh, particularly pressed for money because I believe he walked away from Chicago with well over $15 million in cash. So he's not pressed for money right now. That's not the reason why he's playing, but he will get an additional $2 million this year in salary. Um, I think that his signing really pushes Cleveland uh, that much further because technically Golden State, although they are a loaded team, they haven't really done anything um, this offseason. And while I still think Golden State is the best offensive team in the NBA, other teams in the Western Conference have improved tremendously. Uh, you have, of course, OKC, who won 47, I think, games last year with a roster of nobodies, um, with Russell Westbrook having a historic season. Now he has help. I remember one of my subscribers, Vargas, said that, you know, well, Mike, you guys don't have any excuses now. You know what I mean? Like, he has the help, and that's true, you know. Um, he has the help, so Oklahoma City should go farther this year. But it's not just them. You have the Houston Rockets. They've improved. And a team that a lot of people don't bring up are the Minnesota Timberwolves. And they have a very impressive lineup. And I think that's a team to watch out for um, this year. But o o the Golden State still, I think, is the the well acknowledged favorite to leave out of the West. Come out of the West, excuse me. But Cleveland definitely have made improvements. That trade, I think, I was I'm gonna admit I was wrong. I initially said that I thought that Boston may have came away the slight favorite in that trade, but haven't analyzed each player since that trade. I've changed my mind. I think. That trade benefited uh, Cleveland 60-40. Um, offensively, you had a guy, Isaiah Thomas, that scored 29 points a game. Kyrie's a guy that's capable of scoring that much, I think, on his own, but generally scores by between 23 to 26 points a game, I guess. Um, a better, much better one-on-one -on -one player. Uh, might be a slightly better outside shooter than, than Isaiah Thomas, just slightly. Uh, but offensively, it's kind of a wash. Both players aren't really known for their defense. So there's not really a huge difference uh, in, in those two guys. I mean, I think clearly, how can I put this? I think that if you had to think about it, yes. Kyrie Irving is better than Isaiah Thomas, but it's not like by a tremendous margin where you're like, oh, wow, this is such a mismatch in trade. You know what I mean? But the Cleveland Cavaliers improved defensively with the players they got from Boston. When you look at the fact that they got Derrick Rose, who I think is going to be a tremendous X factor. If he can just stay healthy. If he can stay healthy, I think D. Rose is still in his 20s. I think he's, what, 29 or so, 28, 29 years old. You look at him, and now you have Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade is on the downside of his career. He's 35 years old. Uh, he'll turn 36 during the season. But he's still a guy that can get you probably next year 17 to 18 points a game. Um. And he still is a man capable of stepping up on the defensive end, which is something that I saw with last year with Cleveland 
after a strong start, Cleveland played 500 ball, in my opinion, because I thought they were starting to get a little bit older, but they lacked that defensive intensity that they had shown during their championship year. Um, I remember some different games just took the pedal to all lead on uh, the I have a, a guy to stymie uh, a lot of the runs that a lot of the opponents went on. I remember them blowing a lot of lead, you know, but um, Wade is that guy that can take them to another level. How they're going to use him, um, I'm to assume that he and J.R. Smith are going to top the position. Um, by way of being 35, he can play 30 minutes a game. He plays more like in the 30-minute range per game, I'm guessing. Maybe the playoffs, he might play more. But I don't know exactly which role he's going to play. I don't, uh, but to me, he made enough, enough improvements that they can challenge Golden State this time. It's not going to be that, you know, that blowout that we saw in the NBA Finals this past season. Um, but I think what really helps, too, is Cleveland has gotten all of those distractions out of the way. Um, you know, you, you, you have guys there now who want to play with the organization. Um, and the best thing about it, like, it, it will help LeBron tremendously. Uh, I think it will be like a, a, a little bit of a burden off of LeBron too, to just always be the unquestioned leader. See, like LeBron, and this isn't a criticism of him, he's not like Kobe and Mike. He's a leader, but sometimes I think he kind of doesn't want to always be like the rah, 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 come on, troops, da, 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 da. He's not that guy sometimes. Um, I think sometimes he can be that guy, but I think LeBron's kind of a little bit more laid back. I, I, I think, especially when he was younger, he was a little bit more of a jokester um, at times. He's not an alpha male, per se. That's not a bad thing, but he just is not necessarily an alpha male prototype. Way it is. So now you have two veterans on that club with six NBA championships uh, together. Uh, and I think that Cleveland is going to play exceptionally well this year. That's just my opinion. But tell me what you guys think.